Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Under Rail. In the last episode, we, well, explored more Foundry, talked to a bunch of people, and we have a okay idea what's going on. We know that the creatures that attacked the Foundry Guard and thus closed the mine, which Foundry needs to keep surviving, basically, oh, are made of rock, supposedly, and have metal blades sticking out of their backs. It sounds more like elementals than actual living creatures. We haven't seen any yet, because we haven't ventured deep into the mine, but we'll probably be doing that this episode. We also discovered there's some sort of strange worm in the, the mine, which we also haven't seen. So, we're going to be looking for both those things as we adventure in there. We also discovered a group of faceless, which we had discovered up before. The Foundry wanted to know what they were doing here. We actually talked to them, and we convinced them to leave. Letting them know that the strange object they are looking for is not in Foundry. And indeed, to Garrett's knowledge, it is not. So, um, well, with that in mind, we're now here back at the mayor's office to tell um, the gentleman, not the mayor himself, but uh, I guess the captain of the guard, uh, what the Faceless had said. Yes? I talked to the Faceless. You talked to them. What did you find out? <laughs> we can lie, it makes them all afraid. They are looking for some kind of item. Something that means a lot to them. But it turned out that this item wasn't in Foundry. After talking to them about it, they got into their tunneler and left. Interesting. You will need to stay alert, as it could be some kind of ruse, but the fact that they weren't hostile to you is not a bad indicator by any means. You did well. Here's your reward. He hands you a hundred sticking coins. Take care, Chief. Okay, everyone. Let's, um... Well, I guess we're off. Let's go to the mine again while we're back here. We're looking for a sample, right? We want to find, um... By the way, how do we get into this place? How do we, how do we get in there? Can we see? Oh, right down here. There's, I see the door. Oh, but there's no way we're going to actually get in there. Not being seen. So without being seen. Oh, or maybe. Maybe we can. Oh, this gentleman's going to probably see us, though. Oh, or not. Hey, good job, Garrett. What do we got in this place? Barrel, some scrap. We can use the scrap. A desk that had a single MK1 lockpick and a flat beaker. We'll take all that. Of course, of course, we'll take it. We have some bullets, a thin mine case, another flat beaker. The barrel has just some stolen scraps. And a pistol. Not worth much, but we can scrap it for parts. It's at full condition, so it might give us a little bit. Good work, Garrett. Good work indeed. Hmm. There's a quest that I know is in Foundry somewhere, but I don't actually see how we can start it. I don't want to ruin it either. It's a... How can I describe it? Without giving it away. I didn't... F mm. No, I don't want to, I don't want to say. Uh, I'll have to look around off screen for this other quest that I know we can do here. It has something to do with the missing people. And I was pretty sure it was in that part of Foundry. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, okay. This is back to Foundry itself. Let's go over in this way and enter the mines. Actually, well, have we been this way yet? I can't remember. Let's let's check really quick. I think I thought this led to the giant um. Uh, the giant... 
uh, Smelter, Gloria. Maybe this leads someplace else. I was completely wrong. Oh, hello. We haven't been in... Oh, this leads to a whole other section of Foundry. This is where that quest was that I was just mentioning. Okay, we'll come back here later. I think I forgot all about this entire section. Well, let, let's head to the mine. Let's head to the mine. We'll do some exploring at the very least. We can come back here a little bit later. I also apologize for the delay in the uploads. Uh, Aador Genesis is consuming me. Um, I really like that turn-based strategy game. And uh, when I'm not recording it, I'm playing uh, through either a multiplayer game versus myself for practice. Or a single player, or doing another campaign on another... On another um, Another, whatchamacallit, so it's, uh, yeah, it's consuming all of my time. It's really bad, I shouldn't be doing it, but oh, I love the game so much. What else did we do last episode? Did we kill Baylor last episode? I think that was two episodes ago we killed Baylor. Oh crap, we need a jackhammer! Oh, I guess we just, just take this one, no one seems to mind. And it is not charged at all, though. Let's go ahead and charge it. We'll use our, actually, how much does this weigh? Point ten. They all weigh point ten, Tim. And eh, we'll use it. That's rare. We shouldn't use it. We'll use some of this stuff instead. Let's charge our cool new jackhammer. Let's charge it all the way as well. I guess this gives us. This is good because it gives us an excuse to use a lot of our. A lot of our. A, some of our. Um, energy. ammo, Tim. This is ammo, and this is over here. Okay. We've already talked to everyone. I think it's time, though, for us to enter into fa into the, um, the tunnels. Let's stealth and head on in. That must be one of the worms. They're small, and they're not hostile, apparently. They're not red. It's bigger than I thought it was going to be. But also, well, I thought at first maybe it was going to be a massive worm. But it's, uh... They're, they're not exactly the size of normal worms, but they're not gigantic, hostile-looking creatures. But we are also stealthed. Lots of jackhammers around. Just a single worm, huh? Can we actually take the worm? We could, if it didn't move away. Still no luck. Let's let it uh, forget that we're even here. Don't want to walk into its front, though, Tim. Get a little closer, and we'll nab it when it stops moving to set next time. Go! Oh, crap! Miss click. Try again, Tim. That's right here. We'll pick it up. Borer captured. Awesome. Borer in a dog crate. Weighs eight pounds. Oof. Oh, we still have some carry capacity, though. Let's keep looking around. Lockers, a box, and a barrel, huh? Rubber poison, two bolts. I guess we might as well take all this stuff. Ooh, MK2 incinerate bolt. Very nice. We don't need the caltrop, though. Four repair kits. That's awesome. Uh, I guess we don't actually need all this stuff. Hold on. Let's drop this, this, and we won't need... I don't think we'll need the beakers. We'll just leave those behind at the moment. Everything else you want. All right, let's move on. More borers. Another tunnel. That probably goes back up the way we came. We can go ahead and take a peek at that later. 
Oh, or maybe right now. This is a dead end down here. All right, Boris, excuse me. Pardon me. Coming through. Oh, hello. Wait, wait, wait. Nope. We stumbled it. We bumped into it, but it didn't attack us. Okay, so they're not necessarily hostile. We should be going around stealth, Tim. We haven't seen one of the big giant rock creatures. Oh, there's a boar right next to us. And, it, and we bumped into it. And this is apparently all that is down here. All right, let's take this tunnel up then. Get it marked on the map. Tell you we've been to this room before. However, we only got one of the lines. If you want to know where all the lines go, which is to say all the connecting tunnels, you want to take them all. Uh, I should point out something as well. Oh, oh, maybe not. Maybe that won't work. Okay. Um, ages ago, when this game first came out, there was no map. There was no mini-map. You just had to remember where to go. This is newish. About, uh, I think, a year and a half old? Maybe two years? It was not present here originally. More boars. We also have a barrel. Nothing in the barrel. Yeah, these worms are all over the place. I don't see any other other hostile rock creatures, though. Must be further in the mine. Can explore that a little bit later, I guess. Let's keep going. Keep going deeper. We want to grab at least a piece of one of the creatures, if not try to capture one, so we can show that to, um, whatchamacallit, back in Southgate Station. Oh, you're right in the way. Stupid little rock creature. An explosive barrel... Why does everyone keep explosive barrels all over the place? Like, these were in Half-Life. <laughs> they were in Doom as well. Why what, Why do you need... Why does everyone need explosive barrels sitting around everywhere? It seems really weird. There's some TNT here. Uh, we don't really need it at the moment, though, I think. Let's move on. Oh, music's changing. We also have, looks like, chromium rock. Looks kind of like the creatures. I'm gonna kill these- Oh my god, it scared the heck out of me! <laughs> I'm gonna kill these annoying little things. To stop them from getting in the way. Hello! Oh, you also get a oddity point for killing them. Meta Worm Gizzard. The gizzard is a metal worm's primary digestive organ. It produces powerful enzymes that can be used for medicinal purposes as well. Interesting. I didn't realize you could get something like that from them. I wonder if you could make food out of them, too. We don't see any of these monsters lying around. Let's, uh... Let's move on. How's our... How's our dagger? Oof, that takes a lot of durability loss, though, killing those things. More worms. Lots of them. The music's also evil sounding. We have the evil, evil music. I hate you forever, little worm. Just clear them out of the way. We can get insectoid saliva from them too, huh? Let's just take, pick this up just to get rid of it, basically. I think if you pull the lever, you'll call the minecart to you. Yes. Okay. Yep. Get the minecart. Uh, we'll kill this little borer too. They're not really causing any harm, but they're just annoying to stealth to walk around and stealth with. And we can just leave this crap here. We're not going to take biology on this character. We can leave that here, too. Oh, look, it's a, it's a bladeling. Looks like a dog. Well, it made of spikes and rock. It's decently perceptive as well, surprisingly. Maybe not so surprisingly. Oh, God! And it roars a little. 
Let's go ahead and set a trap or two for it. And then we'll try to get... Oh, hello. Try to get its attention. This is where not having the quick set traps is a bit painful. And we'll set another one right next... Nope. Saw you. If you set that off... If we see it again, we'll try shooting it to get its attention. Let's do it. We should be able to... Sh uh, no. We cannot quite do that. I want full action points when we do this. Because we need to round the corner quickly or we'll hit... Well, the mine will hit us. That's not what we want. We'll wait here for a little bit. See if it pops back up again. And then we'll try killing it and see if we can get something from it. We could also just throw a flare down there. Let's try that and see if that gets its attention. It did. Combat entered. There it is, a bladeling. Looks like those two mines took it just a, about almost half a hit point. Can we poison it? We can poison it. That's good, because this thing is really resistant. Look at this. Bladeling resists 61 mechanical damage. Our dagger, for example, is going to be useless against us unless we crit. The poison, though, will slowly whittle it down. It's also slow, so we can probably get a, around ever having to fight it by just moving past it. We need to poison it again, though. It's not going to die from that. Good. There we go. Five stacks, lasting another turn. We can move up this way. It will die next turn. It has exactly 11 health left. Shielded Bladeling Eye. A Bladeling's eye is shielded by tough, glossy black plate. It's uncertain what the purpose of this plate is, but the eye vitreous humor that separates the plate and the eye seems to possess certain characteristics of a Psy Catalyst. Two impure chromium blades, which we'll take, and I guess we can leave everything else here. Actually, let's take this, just drop it off with this stuff. Okay, we have pieces of a bladeling as well, so I guess we could go ahead and drop that off. Actually, while we're here, why don't we do this as well? Let's use this awesome, um, jackhammer, shall we? We picked up two more impure chromium blades. Nice. Um, I think we'll just leave... I think we'll leave that here, because we'll be coming back here to mine this, these crystals a little bit. We'll also charge it, make sure it's full. I think we can probably just leave it here. I think so. Oh, we're gonna. <laughs> There's plenty of other ones lying around, it's not like we're short on um, any... Uh, whatchamacallits, either. We're not gonna run out of... Batteries. Not the small cells, at least. Not anytime soon. Okay, well, I guess we will go back to Southgate Station. And that probably should be stealth, but I'm going to take a chance that we won't have to worry about that.
Hello everyone. Good job guarding the gate. So yeah, that's a that's a lot of damage these things can soak. I can't imagine what the giant one must be able to do. Well, I mean I can't. I I got I beat this part before, but <laughs> Garrett can no. I can't imagine uh, how powerful that other one must be. Okay, we're going down this way. I'm gonna stop off at Southgate Station. Actually, how's our dagger? Probably can afford to repair that. And soon, we'll be looking to make a better crossbow, I think. I'm interested in what you guys decide for me to do for uh, bolts or tailoring. We have some amazing tailoring pieces. But the bolts would also be so useful for us. It's one of the... One of the oh, the things about not having enough skill points. I was reading about the expansion a little more. And apparently the game is going to give you more skill points when you level. Um, it's going to be adding... The, the DLC for this game, when it comes out, will be adding five more levels to the game. So max level will now be 30 instead of 25. You will get skill points to put in your skills during those level ups. You will not earn another ability point though. But they're going to be doing a little bit of rebalancing for the game because of the new cap, as it were. So you'll, we might be able to gain additional weapon parts which require a higher mechanics than even I was normally used to, for example. So, something we're going to have to consider when we go into the DLC, assuming I'm playing this game during that, that time. Okay, Southgate Station, we have returned. Home sweet home. We'll go ahead and drop, or not drop, we'll bring these things to the peoples. We want the pens. And Lucas, is his name Lucas? Will hopefully help us. I can't remember. Dustin? Lucas? Is it one of those two? <laughs> Quinton! Neither of them. Hey, Quinton. Forget something. Uh, about those mind creatures from Foundry. Ah, yes. I'm listening. I have a piece of the rock creature. Huh, let me see. Quinton expects a piece you gave him. Fascinating. As if you detached this from a piece of machinery and and not a living, breathing creature. This is from its back, right? Is that what you said? Yes. Their backs are covered with these blades. Huh. Well, this is what I can tell you about the creature by looking at this. Considering that you told me the blades grow out of its back, I can guess that it serves a defensive purpose. I see no cavities or canals for nerves or blood vessels to go through, or to accommodate any kind of organic matter. To illustrate what I mean, I'll take our very own bones, for example. We grow our bones through a process called ossification. Do you know what that is? Uh, no. Your bones contain cells called osteoblasts, which she created minerals necessary to form bone. The process by which they do this is called ossification. Now, bone tissue is usually composed of a mineral matrix which, which contains these cells, and bones themselves are composed of approximately 70% mineral content. This blade here, this is one solid piece of metal. No organic matter whatsoever, no porosity, and no traces of this grew out of a living being. How does it grow then? I don't know. Tooth eminal, for instance, is almost completely made of hydroxyplatite, a kind of calcium phosphite that almost no one can pronounce, and with the right rest being water and a hint of organic matter. Emule, which I also can't pronounce, is formed within the gums before the tooth grows out. So there's a possibility that this blade is formed within the shell that grows out later, but how... I don't know. But right now I can only make speculations. Here, take this blade back. If you want to test its composition, better have that done by someone... Well, someone who's not a biologist, that's for sure. He... A smile lifts his mask up slightly. If you can bring me any other part of the creature or a live specimen, then we have ourselves a winner. This, however... I'm sorry. This is all fascinating in any case. I've captured one of those creatures. Quinton expects a creature as it squirms inside the crate. As soon as it spots him, the creature begins thrashing about, occasionally stopping to aim its head at him and screech in an act of desperate intimidation. Now, this is what I'm talking about. 
I'd like to take a look at it. Anything I should know before opening the crate? How dangerous is it? Uh, you've got nothing to worry about. I handled it with my bare hands. He carefully grabs the creature, holding it firmly as it wriggles in his hands. He takes a good look at it, charmed by its oddity in alien form, before he turns to you. Please wait while I examine it. This won't take long. The creature suddenly makes a few powerful motions, wailing its unheld ends and shakes with his upper body, and prompting him to even spread his legs in the, in a bit in order to maintain proper balance. He's able to control it, however. This one's a fighter! You wait while Quentin completes his, his examination, observing him as he performs it with great focus and care. How after only a few minutes, he makes it seem as if he'd been hailing these creatures for years. Slowly and steadily, he finishes the examination. He places the creature back into its mobile jail, turns to you, but only to inform you that he needs to leave and do one more test. The two are gone for a while. Soon he returns to you with a genuine smile on his face, overflowing with excitement, he wastes no time. I'm back, Garrett! I hope you didn't fall asleep waiting for me. <laughs> you seem happy. I hope you got something good for me. You'll see. First, without dissecting the creature, which I would never do without consulting you, I can tell you a couple of things I've learned so far. Their heads do appear to be used for actual drilling. Even though I haven't been able to see it in action yet, obviously, the combination of the unique shape of the head and the surprising powerful musculature makes me feel that it engages its whole body during the process. Maybe it, say, rotates itself in short bursts, or maybe it coils up and releases energy in that matter. I'm just speculating. What is a fact, though, is that the head is very, very tough, so I have no doubt it can bore through hard material without much of an issue. As for the rest of the creature's body, it is segmented and has a, distinct, a dis decently thick skin covered in what appear to be very soft, delicate scales, or at least something similar to it, as in snakes. It probably helps them move, possibly to retain moisture too. The skin is also highly sensitive, which makes sense for a creature limited in ways it can acquire information about its environment. Hmm. There are a few other details about it, but those are quite minor and uninteresting. Now, what did I think was super fit? Now, what I did was a superficial examination. I need to dissect the creature to really tell you more about its anatomy. However, I saved the good stuff for last. I decided to do some psi readings. This is why I left the room earlier, and the readings were off the charts. Hmm. In fact, the creature exhibits a psi signature so strong that I'm surprised it doesn't have some defensive psi abilities at its disposal. However, the signature is also incredibly complex, and I'm not ashamed of telling you even I am having problems interpreting it. He shrugs. I'm afraid that analyzing it is well beyond my skill level, but I'm absolutely 100% positive that understanding this psi signature will not only help you on your, for lack of a better word, quest, but also pave way to engrossing scientific discoveries. For those of us who care, if nothing else. So there. That is all I have for you. That sounds very interesting. Regarding the psi signature, do you know anyone I can take this larva to? Well... As far as Psy in general is concerned, Ezra is a top expert in Southgate Station, so he is the right person to bring this critter to. Hmm. If he can't help you, well, then you're stuck. Yeah, well, he hands the creep back to you. Here. Captivating little thing this is, and feisty. I'll bring this to him. Thanks. Okay. While we're here, we may as well vendor a few organs to him. Hello, Quentin. Looking for th only three organs today. Seventeen Southgate Station credits. Oh yeah, it's like three Charons, maybe. Let's see if someone else can tell us about the blade as well. Let's stop by Big Brett, and if he can't, we'll stop by the uh, Cybernetics Lab. Okay, he cannot do so. So, oh, we're out of food, but what's okay? We're not in a combat situation. Let's go to the engineering department. We'll bring the blades to, um, whatchamacallit first, whose name I forget, over here. Harold. Hey, Harold. Nope. Um, will he even trade one of this? He will not. He'll buy our caltrops, though. Let's vend for those. We're probably never going to actually use caltrops. We, actually, we did use them once, long, long, long ago, didn't we? I'll be looking on lockpicks, by the way. 28? Still not enough to really panic about buying more. A 
Hello, Urza. Are you, uh... Are you still suspicious? You're still suspicious. Alright. Hey, Urza. Hello, Garrett. Could you take a look at this for me? Urza looks at the restless creature, now at the apex of its aggravation. He focuses on it, on it in silence, and as moments pass, the creature becomes more and more calm. Slowly but surely, it reaches a point of complete tranquility and motionlessness, on account of which one could easily mistake it for being dead. Uh, Urza? Oh, sorry, Ezra. Ezra? He turns to you. Where did you find this creature? In a mine and foundry. Interesting. And are there any other creatures living among or in close proximity to these? Yes, uh, creatures with shells made of rock that have metallic blades on their backs. Those are the only ones as far as I know. He speaks but more to himself than you. I see. Another adaptation. It makes sense. And you, why are you so interested in this subject? Uh, Foundry is having difficulties with these creatures as they are infesting their mine. But the real problem is the beast. A creature identical to what I described, but much larger, tougher, and much meaner. As yet, there doesn't seem to be an apparent way to kill it. The creature, because of its heavy armor, is practically invulnerable, and nearly all who faced it lost their lives. So, you want to find a way to kill it? Very well. I understand everything now. I'll tell you what you need to know. The creature you brought me is actually the larval form of the rock creature you described. As strange as that may seem, yes, these are their larvae. I've encountered them in the past, in different forms though. Regardless, I can help you find this adaptation's weakness, but for that, you will have to bring me some part of the creature to analyze. Try to bring me a piece of its shell, or black back blades if you can. If not, then bring whatever you are able to acquire. You mentioned something about adaptations. What did you mean? You see, the larva uses its psi energy to cocoon itself inside living or non-living entities and tailor its genetic makeup to support the organism's further development in accordance with what it's merging with. Inside, the larva develops into its adult form and the resulting creature is fully integrated with the entity of choice. So, if the creature wants a rock shell, it will dig itself into a rock and fuse with it. Do you know what these creatures are called? Pre-enhanced polymorphic organisms, or cymorphs for short. I have a piece of one right here. Let me see it. I will be right back. He takes a sample from you and leaves the room. Time elapses. Just as I suspected. What did you discover, Ezra? I've managed to analyze the composition of this impure chromium blade, and I emphasize this because over 90% of this blade is indeed chromium. But that you knew already. However, what you, what you didn't know is that it is the other 10% that is differentiate vermin from a walking apocalypse. Foundry is very unfortunate in having their surrounding rock made up of some of the hardest minerals in nature, for it is these materials which together form the living armor of these creatures. And I am not just talking about their shell, no. It is their whole bodies which are comprised of these metals and minerals, albeit in varying quantities depending upon the section, of course. Chromium is in itself a resistant metal, but its strength lies in its high heat resistance. The rest of the materials serve to counteract mechanical forces acting upon the organism. It appears that in small creatures, this robustness can be overcome by conventional means, if barely. In the beast, I'd suggest you return to Foundry and tell them to collapse the cave where it lives and abandon them altogether. But that isn't an option, or you wouldn't be here. Luckily, there is a way. By my calculations, I've taken all the approximate consul- cons Constituent emolents found inside the sample into consideration. The temperature necessary to melt these creatures' shell should be at least 2,500 degrees centigrade. Ironically, considering chromium is practically the essence of these creatures, this seems to be the most realistic way to defeat it, as Foundry is likely to have some means, be it a furnace or something else, which can melt chromium, hence producing temperatures this high. What about plasma weapons? How come these are ineffective against the beast when plasma can reach insane temperatures? 
When all molecules are ionized, yes, plasma can reach, theoretically, temperatures in the range of billions of degrees. However, most conventional plasma weapons we have today use plasma where only a fraction of gas molecules are ionized. There are three primary reasons for this. First, one is the technological limitation. The second is power consumption, and third is the fact that the shooter does not want to be evaporated together with everything else around him when firing his weapon. How come you know so much about these creatures? Knowledge like this does not arrive merely encountering something. I have learned quite a few things throughout the years. There are bits and pieces of knowledge and history everywhere you look, and over time, things simply accumulate. Does Biocorp have anything to do with it? I may have come across some of their research. It is hard to remember. So it seems I'm going to need a way to lure the beast into Foundry and kill it there. Anything you can do to help me with the luring part? And what will you do once it's in Foundry? Do you have a plan? Foundry has this old, large smelting furnace near the mine entrance. I could use that to pour molten metal onto the beast and kill it. That seems plausible. I happen to know from previous research how these creatures communicate. With the larval form you brought me, I think I will be able to create a device which you will be able to use to summon the creature. At least, it should. What do you mean by it should? This is an improvised device that I am making out of components that I have at hand. Things can go awry. Maybe it'll summon the creature you want. Maybe it'll summon something else. I won't know until you press the button. Making the device shouldn't take long, though. I believe I have already all the necessary components right here. Wait some more, would you? He returns with the gift he promised. Here it is. Try your best not to disturb the larva within the device too much. You need it to be alive for the device to function properly. Alright, let's trade while we're here. No one imagined if we should talk about what uh, to Urza, so I'm not going to bother doing that unless someone really wants to see. Okay. Well, he doesn't really. we don't have anything to trade with him, and all his stuff's going to be lower level than what we've got. So, take care, Urza. Um, Southgate Station will eventually refresh its items with slightly higher gear, but by far and large, Core City is where you want to go for all that stuff. Uh, while we're here, I think we'll go visit our private quarters and see if we want to drop off anything and or pick anything up before we go back to Foundry. And we'll do that on screen. Why not? Okay, so first, drop off the crap we don't want. Next, I don't think we have any extra weapon. We do have, oh right, I meant to take that apart. Cycle item. The Hawker. Uh, only 31. We'll still take it. That gives us enough to make a repair kit. Yeah. Look at that, look at that money we've saved. Look at that money we've saved. It's amazing. I haven't even built anything yet. <laughs> okay. Um. Do we want to take anything with us? Do we want to take anything with us? We fought a few of these mine creatures by now. We're probably going to want some more mines. Let's bring even more mines with us. We have any more high uh, HE mines here? We have. I see MK3s. I guess we'll take. Let's take all of these with us. We probably don't need the EMP mine. We'll probably want our crit goggles on. I think we'll leave the three bolts MK2 behind. We'll leave our MK3 shock bolts. So we'll leave all the shock bolts behind. We won't leave the Molotovs for this. Do we have any MK2 grenades already? We've got what we've got. Let's take a handful more of these. Take four of these. That would be good. Actually, let's take all of our Burr Poison Bolts we've been holding on to. All of them will come with us. Uh, 
maybe we don't need the MK3s quite yet. Oh, look at that. Required skill 25, detection difficulty 100%. That's interesting. I don't remember seeing that before. Look at that heat damage we want. Yeah, we'll take all this with us. It's going to be a bit tricky, but we want all of this. Do we have any of those blades still with us? We have three of them. Okay. Um, I guess we're good. Let's Actually, let's leave everything I don't think we're going to be needing back. Because we're going to have to mine quite a bit. Okay. Back to Foundry we go. Goodbye, home sweet home. Oh, Tim, you only bringing three of these with you? Well, we do have four fusion cells. That should be enough. All right. Um, back to Foundry. We can totally take the train. What else do we have to do? We have a ton of exploring we still have to do, right? We have not explored all of this yet. Like, we have this whole entire center section to explore. We haven't been in yet. Look at all these have not explored. You've also got at least one research uh, place to go to, and that's just in this area. Looks like, uh, did we explore all this? Nope, we did not explore this, this bed and facility, and we have more up here as well. Crawlers are up there, though. But we should especially be ready for crawlers soon enough. We have an excellent dagger now to help us kill them, and we've, we're all very close to reaching level 20, at which point... Well, Deathstalkers will always be give us trouble, but a single Deathstalker, we should be able to handle it reasonably enough. Okay. I guess the first thing we should do is go back to the mayor. And while we're here, let's eat some food. I wonder if there's new fish for fishing as well. I guess biology lets you cook in this game. Alright, so first stop the mayor. Yep, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Nothing else to talk about, Tim? Alright, um... I really should have read more information about the DLC for this game. It's not out yet. Um... And I have no clue when it will be released. I don't think they know where, when it's coming out either. I'll be surprised, however, if it's not out this year. Um, I think they announced it two years ago. But it's one of those, it'll be done when it's done type of deals. Um, the only things I know about it is that you'll get a, a water ski that you can upgrade. That lets you move around in that area. Because there's going to be there's gonna be a lot of water and islands in that area. There's going to be some sort of uh, ancient race as well that you're going to find. Like some sort of cthulhu -esque type of type of thing in there, if I recall correctly, as well. Alright, let's talk to the mayor. What is it now? About the mine creatures. Yes? Got any useful information? I've learned more about the beast and how to defeat it. Oh? I'm all ears. The creature is highly resistant to both mechanical forces as well as high temperatures. From what I've learned, our best way to defeat it is to use extreme heat. Temperature of over two and a half thousand degrees centigrade should be enough to melt its shell and kill the creature. Heat. Oh, I know what you're trying to say. You want to lure the creature inside the metalworks and try to kill it with molten metal. Is that correct? I was thinking of perhaps using that large smelting furnace near the mine to kill the beast. I even have a way to lure it there. That piece of junk. Please, that thing's been causing us more harm than good lately. It's been drawing power like a trainload of coil spiders. And even caused a blackout in half of the foundry. Just recently completely broke down and we won't bother fixing it for now, if ever. Forget about that piece of junk and do not listen to Bernard. Don't. Luring the beast into the foundry would be a high risk operation. The creature could go on a rampage if let into foundry. Not to mention that the smaller creatures will most likely follow it. Yes, yes, that is what I was about to say. And, even if you can somehow lure it in, none of the working furnaces can produce temperatures of that magnitude, besides the smaller ones we use for melting chromium, but those are simply too small. Look, I, we, we really are thankful for your help. Really. But the plan you're proposing is just too risky. We need another way. Well, we don't have another way. It's that, or it's not going to happen. 
that's all there is to it. So... Let's go and talk to... Actually, we haven't explored this area. Well, we don't have a lot of weight, Tim. Going exploring at this moment is would be a mistake. Let's go and talk to the... Smelting... Guy... Who operates Gloria again. See if Gloria can indeed reach that temperature. And if he does, maybe we can find someone who will repair Gloria. There is the electronics guy right here, who has done some work on Gloria before. He might be able to help. <sighs> All right. Sorry, yawning. It's uh, 7.23 p.m. It's nearing my bedtime. I think we'll, we won't be able to finish... Well, yeah, we won't be able to finish this quest this episode. But we can at least uh, talk to this gentleman. I can't believe how fast time goes when I play this game, though. We played for almost an hour already. Yeah, so what else have we been playing, Tim? Might as well talk about that. Actually, there hasn't been a whole lot of any... Oh! I'm playing a, a platformer called Time Spinner. Uh, it reminds me a little, or maybe a little more, of the old Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, but it has, it's a little grindy, which I find weird. Uh, you get quests in that game, but the quests are like, kill ten of, kill ten of these creatures. And that's a bit, uh, it's a bit odd for me to get uh, collection quests in a platformer game of that sort. Granted, I, I played a game, what was it? Unepic was a game where you had collection quests as well. But, uh, it wasn't quite as... Oh, I guess it was kind of grindy, even then, even for that game. So, I guess I can't really... can't, can't say it wasn't. Totally was. Alright, we're here. Hello. Hello, sir. What you need? May I ask you how high this furnace can go temperature-wise? Ah! Gloria's very hot. I think she can go up to 3,000. Even three and a half thousand degrees centigrade. Yeah, that's a lot. Trust me. She could melt anything. I even told the mayor that same thing, but he doesn't believe me. He told me to shut my tick hole because he thinks I'm making up for convince him to fix her. Damn him! He explicitly told me to forget that piece of junk when I asked him about it, so I don't think he has changed his mind. Damn him! Bernard... How can I help you repair this furnace? You mean Gloria? Yeah, that'd be awesome, but hold on. Why would you want to do that? Why is it important to you? I need to kill the large beast from the mine. Wow. That's going to be quite a challenge. But look, if it can help me fix my Gloria, she'll show you what she's capable of. <laughs> now, I'll explain what Gloria suffers from. At least what I think is a problem. You see... There's something wrong with the electrode power regulation system that's being controlled through this console. Before Gloria broke down, she started drawing so much power from this system it caused a blackout in nearly half the foundry. I don't think it's the problem with the console, but the unit itself, but nothing I try seems to work. Muck. Have you found anyone else who can help you? The mayor gave an order not to bother repairing Gloria, so no one wants to help me. On top of that, they call me derail for trying to fix her. The fools. All right, I'll find someone, Bernard. We don't have any electronics. We can wait until I take electronics, if we electronics is something that I take. Um, but then we're talking like level 25, and we might not have electronic skill to actually do it, since if I were gonna take electronics and chemistry, those would be left at level 60, which would give us an effective skill of 75. Alternatively, we can check to see if the one gentleman will help us. Let's go all the way back to the electronics store here at Foundry and talk to the guy who has seen Gloria before, since he may be able to help us. So what else, Tim? What else have we been playing? Just that, I think, and Aador. I occasionally still fire up a Deep Rock Galactic. Um, they have the one, their one-year release anniversary uh, a week ago. But unfortunately, something's wrong with the game servers now, because they don't seem to be popping up. I can't find anything, so... But I still like... I love that game. I love mining in any game I play. Uh, for World of Warcraft, when I was playing that game, all I would want to do is just get on my mount, 
and fly around the old world and mine copper, tin, and uh, thorium and stuff like that. That was it. That's all I ever wanted to do. I just loved it. I have no clue why. It was awesome. <laughs> hey, West. Welcome back, friend. I need help fixing an electric arc furnace. If it's an electrical problem, then yes, I can help you. Where do you need me exactly? <coughs> it's a large furnace near the mine entrance. Uh, one man named Bernard seems very fond of it. Uh, uh? Well, he's not exactly the sanest man around here. But as long as I'm being paid, I don't have a problem with it. And I've already worked that with that same furnace. Unless it's something very drastic, I can handle it. But I mentioned he thinks the problem lies with the electro power regulation system. Hmm. Uh, that's not going to be a simple fix. But if that is the issue, then yes, I can take care of it. Money is not the issue as long as you can get the job done. Oh, that's good to hear. I'm asking for 500 charons. I don't think anyone sane would do it for less. So we don't have mercantile. And we would need a certain skill level to talk him down. It's a deal. Alright, Wes, it's a deal. Here's 500. Good. I'll be heading there as soon as I finish soldering this thing. I just hope Bernard doesn't talk my fireball ears off. Right. Catch you later. Alright, so he's totally done it. We can just go back to Bernard. So let's do that really quick and see what Bernard says. And then we'll call the session once we're done. The next episode will feature a lot of rock creature killing and mining chromium. In, in particular, those impure blades. Just a heads up, everybody. But it might be all combat to make up for the fact we haven't done that much of it the past few videos, have we? That was fun also killing Baylor, wasn't it? That was a... Uh, woo! What a fight. If we've been playing on a hard difficulty level, we probably would have failed that battle. But, woo! That went really well for us. For those of you who picked up the game, also let me know what you think of it, assuming you've even got this far in the video series. I know, I think at least like two or three people who watched my series picked up the game and were telling me how much they, uh, well, at least I hope that they that they really like it. I, I myself, I think this game is fantastic. The difficulty is just right as well, like normal. Normal gives you a good challenge. That's why I'm playing on normal. I like it. Anything harder is probably for the, uh, for the, the, the really, really satisfying challenge you probably have. Especially of fine-tuning your character. Getting every, every single point you spend put to good use on your character development. Be interesting if the game gave you like one more skill point. If you leveled on a higher difficulty level to entice you to go ahead and select it. But to my knowledge, it makes everything tougher. By, and it makes it tougher, I think, by add, um, I think by adding more creatures to the encounters. Hey, Bernard. Wes came and thanks Gloria. My beauty's working again. I want to thank you so much, Garrett. You rock. My dear Gloria's back. Is it ready to be used? You can't wait to see Gloria in action. I want to see her too, I tell you the truth. But the thing is, you need the loader with some ore and start the melting process. We went through most of our supplies after the mine was closed, so chances are you're going to have to go into the mine. Any ore rich in metal should do the trick. You can use the cart system to help you carry all that around. Ha, uh, okay. I know what to do. Go for it, man. Alright, so. Now, we can go into the mine. And we can use the carts to transport all the shards around, rather than carry them ourselves. Um, that would be very helpful, considering that the shards weigh, I think, five pounds each? Oh, are we still carrying around the little creature? No, we are not. At least I don't see it. We're still carrying around three blades, though. Okay, so let's make our way... ...to the mining. Oh, we haven't even been in this section. Oh, and look at all the boars that are around here. More jackhammers, a barrel. We're gonna, totally going to search that. Hello. Old lamp. You'd be worth 80 points. I think this room's just a dead end, but we're here. Oh, and then we'll call the session after this room. Whatever, whatever is or isn't in this room, we're going to end it after we explore it. So 
rubble. That's gonna be one of those, um, fossils. Oh, we got all the fossils already. Okay, everyone. I think we probably should stop here. Oh, we've been in this section before. All right, so we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna thank you all for watching. And hopefully I will see everyone in the next one, where we will hopefully also solve Foundry's problem. I will see you guys then, and take care, everyone.